שלום וברכה אודה תו אישו ואל בעזרת השם. איז דבר תורה, איז דה ממורי ודה צדיק, רבי מאיר פינטו עליו השלום. That tonight it's uh, his Hilula, and as well, this shiur is the memory of Moshe ben Abraham Aaron, Alav Shalom, that uh, he passed away like uh, this week. I would like to pray to Hashem that the zikhut of this, this tzaddik, Rabbi Meir Pinto, that he was the brother of my father, the son of Rabbi Chaim Pinto, may his zikhut be with you. Amen. My friend, I would like just to tell you a, a small story about Rabbi Meir Pinto. One month before he passed away, I was with him for, uh, for one month. One month I was with him. As you know, his brother was uh, killed by some, some people that, by, by, by a man that he, he came to, to rob him in the house. And uh, of, unfortunately, that story hap- happened about uh, uh, 50 years ago. And uh, he used to live with uh, his brother, Rabbi Mir. Both of them are my uncles, brothers of my father. And uh, when I heard what happened about my uncle, Rabbi Rafael Pinto, that uh, he was killed, so I went to Morocco. And then I went to the, uh, for the funeral. Then I went to the house. I saw Rabbi Mir that he was not well. He was very, very ill. So I asked him, Rabbi Meir, uncle, who killed your brother? If the police came, they asked him questions. If he saw who, what happened, because all this happened in the house. He said, no, I didn't see, I don't remember. But I told my uncle, you do remember. You, you do. You saw him. You saw the killer. Can you tell me who? He told me, in one month, you will know. In one month, you will know. Now I can't tell you. Well, it was a big tzaddik. But every day, for one month, I was with him in the house. I served him. And it's funny. I was not afraid to stay in that house. It was the house of Rabbi Chaim Pinto of Casablanca. As you know, Rabbi Chaim Pinto, my grandfather, he left Isawira three years be- before he passed away. And for three years he was living in Casablanca. So, every day I was there, but with no fear. I mean, usually, you know, in this house somebody was killed. Usually, you, you don't want to stay in that house. But uh, I feel insecurity. I feel that. Uh, what happened to my uncle? Because Hashem, he wanted him. That's it. And somebody told me, Rabbi David, you know, one week before Rabbi Rafael Pinto was killed, he was crying. And he told, he told to that man, Mr. Ruimi, Mr. Seboni, excuse me. He told him, you know, Mr. Seboni, Victor, I don't think that I'm going to die like everybody. Something is going to happen. He, he used to tell him that he wants to be like a kapara for Am Israel. So Mr. Sibuni told him, no, don't talk like that. And uh, B. Rafael Pinto, Allah Shalom, he did not answer. He just, uh, he said, well, uh, this is something that's going to happen. There is nothing you can do. Unfortunately, in that week he passed away. My friend, after one week that I was with my uncle in the house, that he will not reveal his secret two weeks, three weeks. And uh, a lot of people used to come to visit him. Hundreds of people, they will come to visit him during those, that month. And then, one day before he passed away, we saw that he was very, very tired. 
and then the Chibra Kadisha came, and the, the, the Chibra Kadisha, one of the Chibra Kadisha, he told me, Rabbi David, I think uh, your uncle is not far away from giving his soul to Hashem. And I see some signs because uh, from the signs I see that, that uh, that's it. So again, I ask him, Rabbi Meir, can you tell me, you told me, in one month you will tell me. Do you know what he said? Tomorrow you will know. That was on Tuesday. And we saw that he was uh, really dying. So a lot of people came from all over Casablanca for uh, to be beside him for when the neshama is going to come out from his body. And then, at that moment, I asked him, can you give me a bracha that I get married? I am, I am nearly 30 years old. I am not married. And Rabbi Meir Pinto he looked at me. He told me, Be'ezat Hashem, this year, you will get married. This year, you will meet your future wife, and next year, you will get married. And Baruch Hashem, exactly that's what happened. Rabbi Meir Pinto passed away. The same year, I meet my wife, and I got married to her after three months later. I meet her on uh, the month of Elul, and we got married after Rosh Hashanah the next year. This, I met her this year, and I married her three months later. It's incredible. And you know, the people who killed my uncle, they've been arrested the day of his, the day that he passed away. That means he was a big prophet. That means, as he said a, a month ago, he said, in one month you will know who killed Rabbi Raphael. And a month later, we, uh, the police arrested the killer. And the killer was drunk. One day he was very, very drunk. And he was talking that day. And uh, when he said what he did, so they went to tell the police. And the police came to the house. And uh, they arrested him. My friend, the parish of this week... It's, the para, it's all the parachute that we, we read. is the parachute about the Beit HaMikdash. Hashem, he said, do me a house where I can live. I want my residence with you. So the Midrash said that Moshe Rabbeinu, he said to Hashem, Hashem, you are everywhere. There is no empty space. Where you want me to build your house? There is no way. Wherever you go, wherever we go to build your house, you are there. I mean, there is no empty space. So Hashem said, Hey, Moshe, I'm not talking about a house, a real house. I know, you cannot build me a real house. There is no space because I am everywhere. I am the moon. I am in Mars. I am in space. There is not everywhere. I am in all galaxy. All the galaxy that you see, I know their names. We say every day in the, in the Tefillah that Hashem, He counts every day how many stars there is. And each star has a name. Like a father, He knows the names of His children. And He counts them. You know, the, so Hashem, he knows how many stars there is. There's billions of stars. You know how many there is. There is billions, the trillions of animals, everything. And Hashem, he has an open eyes of everything. He knows everything because he's the boss, he's the creator. So Hashem, he said to Moshe, I know. There is, I'm, I'm not telling you to build me a palace, a big house for me. Because there is no, there is no way you can build a house for me. Oh, what I want is 
that each one of you, each one of you, ve'asu li mishkan v'shachanti b'docham. Oh, what I want, you know, there is empty space in one place. Only in one place, my friend, listen to this. Only in one place there is empty space. All the world is full of the presence of Hashem. Even in the toilet, the toilet, it's impure, it's filthy, it's dirty. There is Hashem there. When you go there, you don't die. Why you don't die? Because Hashem will keep you. Let me tell Hashem is with you even there. But there is only one place that there is, is empty from Hashem. Is the man. The man. The man. His duty is to be clean. That to invite Hashem to come in. You know, my friend, there is a free will. You have freedom. No one, Hashem, don't force you to be a religious man. Hashem, don't force you to respect Shabbat. Hashem, don't force you to eat kosher. You are free. You are, you are on the plane. You are in first class. And they bring you food. You are the one to decide. You want to eat? Or you don't want to eat? Nobody force you. Don't eat. One day I was in the plane. And uh, there was uh, somebody who was eating not kosher food. And he looked at me. I did I didn't. I didn't. I didn't look to look at him, but he looked to to look to look at me, and he told me, "I'm hungry." I told him, "Bon appétit, good appetite." It's your problem. I'm not here to to uh, to force you not to eat. I understand you. He said, "But uh, I feel a, a little bit embarrassed." I told him, "Why well, you have to be embarrassed of Hashem?" Not of me. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm nothing. You have to be embarrassed of Hashem. That word, when he listened to that word, he didn't swallow the, the food. He went like that and he took it. He didn't eat. I didn't force him. I didn't tell him not to eat. My friend, that's what Hashem wants from us. Hashem, He wants from us that we fill up the empty space that we have on us and to put there Hashem. Hashem is everywhere. Hashem is everywhere. But Hashem, He said, well, do my space on you. The Asuri Mishkan, do my space where I can come and live inside you. I don't force you. I don't force you. My friend, this is the tzaddikim. I told you about Rabbi Meir Pinto, Arab Shalom. I know a lot of stories that people told me about him, how much he was a big tzaddik. And look, he was a prophet. He promised me before he passed away. This year you get married. This year you, you meet your wife, you get married. That's what happened. I meet the girl before the end of the year and I got married to her in the beginning of the next year. He told me in one month they will catch the one who killed Rabbi Raphael. They catch him. How he did it? How he knew it? Well, my friend, because Hashem was inside him. He was a tzaddik. You know what it is a tzaddik? A tzaddik is a one who puts space in his body for Hashem. 
You know, my friend, everybody love money. Everybody love to enjoy themselves. Everybody love presents. Everybody want to win the lotto. Everybody want to have a good, uh, good vacation, uh, vacance, uh, uh, holidays. Everybody is. But do you think about Hashem? Do you love Hashem the same way you love money, cars, houses? There is only space on you, only for money. There is no space for Hashem in your mind. Where is all the tzaddikim? Where are they? Where are the other tzaddikim? Where is Baal Shem Tov? Where is Baal Atanya? Where is all those tzaddikim? Where are they sitting next to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? They enjoyed themselves. Why? Because they were next to Hashem this world. So they are next to Hashem up there. I would like my friend to remind you something about it. The Torah said that when the Jews left Egypt and then the Jews arrived to the sea and there was a problem. They don't know how to swim. They did not know how to cross, how to go, where to go. And they said to Hashem, Hashem, what 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 can happen to us? Behind us, it's Egypt. Left, right, desert. In front of us, the water. Where are we gonna go? And you told us, go ahead. Go ahead to the water. Uh, and Moshe Rabbeinu asked Hashem, Hashem, can you find me a solution? What to tell them? So Hashem told Moshe. Till now, they believed in me. Okay, what I told you, go ahead. So go ahead. Kadima, go ahead. So Moshe Rabbeinu told them, hey Jews, go ahead. This is the message. When they decided to go ahead, so the sea split. This is the message. When you listen to the voice of Hashem, you go ahead. Hashem he said, do that, do it. You have success. You have success. My friend, the Torah said, Vaishma Yitro. Yitro he heard. What Yitro heard? He heard what Hashem he did to the Jews that they crossed the sea and then Amalek came to fight them. I don't understand what the meaning. Uh, Yitro, that he was a goy, and he came to convert. He came to the desert. He left everything behind. And he came to, do, to convert himself to Judaism. But what was the reason that he came? Because he heard that Hashem made a big nest to the Jews he split the water for them, and then Amalek came. What the, what the, what the connections? Why he thought he did not come for all the miracles that he heard? What Hashem did to the Jews in Egypt, the ten plague, the ten makot, only this and the fight, the war with Amalek. What 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 that mean? Why for this? It's like I tell you. Hey, you know, I saw a mosquito fighting a lion. It's not a story. I mean, uh, it, it tell me, my friend, uh, two lions are fighting a tiger with a lion, a mosquito fighting a, li a lion. It's crazy. And the lion beat the, beat the, 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 the mosquito. Ah. Amalek came to fight Hashem and Hashem beat him. What, what's this, my friend? What, what's special of the crossing of the sea that made it true to come to convert? Why, why he did not come to convert when he heard 
de ma carte vechorot, all the first born in Egypt pass away die, and the only one who remained was Pharaoh. Uh, bigness. There were millions of first born, but Hashem chose only the Egyptians and the foreigners and the first born of the of the of uh, of animals, but no first born from the Jewish people or first born from the all the animals pass away. It's a big ness. Now he heard the split of the water. That made him to come. My friend, you know what it is the answer? He threw what made him to come. Okay. The Jews, they saw a lot of Nisim, and they saw a lot of miracles. A lot of miracles happened in Egypt till when they arrived to the sea. When they arrived to the sea, usually, usually the normal thing is that Hashem, He had to, to guide the Jews to take a normal way. I mean, and Hashem he did not take them in a normal way. He took them toward the sea. It's not logic. My friend, if I want to go to if I want to travel, I take the map the map to see where is the road. I will not take a map that take lead me straight to the sea. There is no way. I mean he draw he heard. It's not normal. The Jewish people, they came out of, of Egypt. Hashem should give them a, a way that did not need to cross the sea. And if Hashem want to kill Pharaoh and his uh, army, he has a lot of ways of how to, to deal with them. Why Hashem bring the, the, the Jews toward the sea, in front of the sea? That was the question of Yitro. Why Hashem did that to, to the Bnei Israel? Till now, Hashem he was doing, he was beating the Egyptian, and not the Jews. The Jews were spectator. And now Hashem is, is putting the Jews in a bad situation. He put them right in front of the sea. Why? Why he didn't open? Why Hashem didn't tell Moshe Rabbeinu? Left, right, avoid the sea. You know why? Because Hashem he wanted that the Jews should know when Hashem said, "Go further, Kadima, go forward, go straight." Even if there is no straight, there is the sea. Hashem said, "Go," so you go. That was that. That was it. Was heard. When Hashem tells you something to do, don't worry. Do it. You never lose. My friend, I would like to tell you a beautiful story. It's a beautiful, a nice story. You know, uh, there was a man who told me that he went to to France, and uh, he didn't. He did not. He didn't see his parents for. Years, and his, his parents they were very old people, and they told him, "Come to, come to see us." The Torah said, "Kibud avaim, you have to respect your father and mother. We cannot fly. You come to see us." And uh, this man, he was, uh, you know, he was worried uh, to, to to take the, the the plane. I don't know what happened to him, and. <laughs> From what he was worried, it happened. He said, when he was on the plane, something happened in the plane. And the plane, he started to lose, you know, uh, uh, he started to feel, you know, the pressure. He started to, uh, and, and, and the people started to scream. And really, the, the plane was uh, in a very, very bad situation. And it's like he it was going down, 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 down. And he told me, Rabbi, Rabbi David, I said, this is, that, that's it. this is the end. But 
I heard people say, Shema Israel, ba 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 ba. And at that moment, I said, Hashem, you said in the Torah, respect your father and mother. So I respect my father and mother. I respect them. I'm going to France just because they told me the Torah said, respect your father and mother, come to, uh, to see us. So Hashem, that was the reason. Do because I'm, I'm, do, I'm going further. I'm respecting what you said. Something is going to happen to all of us, to me. Da, da. At that moment, he said, suddenly the engine started and the, the plane started to, to take, to, to fly, to, to take, you know, a stability. Well, it's a story. It's a story. The Torah said, go further, go further. That's what it heard. It, re- it re- heard that Hashem wanted to, to test the Jews. He wanted to test them. Okay, you have Imuna. Okay, you're the best. We say there, you believe in me. But no, I want to test you. I want to see how much your Imuna is on me. How? Hashem did two things. Suddenly the Egyptians, the Jews thought it's finished with Egyptian, Egypt, and they saw Pharaoh and his army going behind the Jews. Wow, 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 wow. Terrible. Terrible. That was terrible. And they started to pray to Hashem. Then, okay, again, they, they arrived to, to the sea. Moshe, you don't, you don't have a GPS? Look, the Egyptians are behind. This in front. Right, left, it's desert. Where am I going to go? That was terrible. So Moshe Rabbeinu, he said, Hashem, what am I going to do? Hashem, he told him, I told you, Kadima, go forward, go straight. That's it. And Baruch Hashem, they went, they went into the water and the sea split. My friend, every day, we do as Yashem Moshe. Every day we remember the crossing of the sea. And every night, in the prayer of the night, we do remember when the Jews crossed the sea. Why? Well, the Torah wants to remind you that if you want to have Emun on Hashem, not only when, when everything is good, when you have everything. The emunah of Hashem is, when you have a problem, go ahead with your emunah. Go ahead, be, go, go straight, don't worry. Don't worry. Have Hashem in mind. Have emunah on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, don't worry. HaKadosh Baruch is keep, capable of doing everything. My friend, I will never forget. One day, I was, uh, I had to, uh, to do a surgery. And, uh, and uh, the doctor, he told me, well, Rabbi, we're going to do a, a mask on you. After a few, uh, you know, breathing, you will go to the Shamaim. You will, uh, you will, uh, you will uh, sleep. And then we will wake you up. I said to myself, usually it's hard for me to sleep at night. And never I sleep during the day. Now they cannot put me to sleep. How how they can put me to sleep? I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to fight against the anesthesia not to sleep. And I was the, f- I, when they put the mask, I was fighting, fighting. Then when I woke up, I heard the doctor, Mr. Pinto, Mr. Pinto, wake up. Wake up, are you okay? I opened my eyes. I said, it's finished. You did it. Finished. How much we have to say thank you to Hashem? That we wake up. To put us to sleep against our will, 
And Baruch Hashem, we wake up. And the night we go to sleep, and Baruch Hashem, we wake up. How much we have to say thank you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But do people say thank you to Hashem for this, for every breath that they breathe? No, because they think it's normal. It's normal. We go forward with our life. We want success. We want to have everything. But what about Hashem and all this story? For you, yes. You don't miss nothing. You go forward of everything you want. But what about Hashem? This is something that uh, we have to remember all the time. My friend, Baruch Hashem thanks God. It's not difficult to put ourselves uh, like a a residence for Hashem because there is space. It's your space. It's your will. You have freedom to fill that space to put Hashem inside or just put there the Sahara. David Amelech said, Will it be halal vikiri? In my heart, there is an empty space. There is no Yitzhara there. Because I killed the Yitzhara with the Torah that I study. And that's what Yitro heard. Yitro heard that Hashem, he tested the Jews. He wanted to teach them that even when they are in a very, very bad situation, that there is no way out of their problems. Behind there is the Egyptians. Right, left is desert. In front of them there is sea. What can we do? Kadima, go forward. Hashem say, go, go. Hashem said, don't do that, so don't do it. Hashem said, do that, do that. That's what it will heard. It's a big lesson that it will learn for himself to come to convert himself. But he heard Amalek. Amalek is the doubt. Amalek is the Yitzhara. When the Yitzhara, he look at you and he see you, that you want to go forward, that always you want to go ahead. So the Sarai will do everything he can to stop you. So what you do? You have to fight him. Don't let the Sarah take the empty space in your heart with, through the doubts that you put in your mind. Fight him. Go forward. Kadima, go with Hashem. Go with Hashem. And you will beat him. That's what he told he heard. He heard, you can have Imuna, a big Imuna, but on the other hand, the Etzara, he can fight your Imuna to have you in his hand to be a good customer to him. Because they say, I don't want to lose a customer. He don't want to lose you. So it's a fight. It's a daily fight. My friend, I would like just to finish with a, a beautiful story 
about uh, Amen because today is uh, is the anniversary as well of uh, one of my friends, Rabbi Nisim Bijawi Alava Shalom, and uh, as well uh, Rabbi uh, Leo Adad used to go with me to Mexico to Argentina, I used to travel with me to to New York. He passed away like today. I would like just to tell you a beautiful story about the, the both of them. Rabbi Sim Alava Shalom Bijawi, he was a tzaddik. He has a business and always he will uh, He will always put Hashem in priority. When he was very, very, very ill, instead of taking drugs and just sleep, because his life, they couldn't, they couldn't do nothing to save him, I heard him praying and recording, writing, Divre Torah. He told me, Rabbi David, this is the only way that I, can, I will not feel the pain that I had. It's incredible. This is a real Mishkan of Hashem. That was Hashem you want. When you go further, when you feel the empty space of you with Hashem, you don't feel the pain, the physical pain. As I said before, Lewa Dad, Yehuda Dad, Arab Shalom, I will never forget. One day we traveled all night from Marseille to Lyon. We arrived in the morning about five o'clock, and he told me, Rabbi David, today is Rosh Chodesh. I'm going to go home. I cannot sleep because I have to take my daughter to, to the school. So, Rabbi David, if you want, I will come to pick you up in two hours for the tefillah. I said, look, Leon, come. Knock at the door. You have the key of the house. Enter. And you call me. If I can go, I go with you to the synagogue. Otherwise, I sleep. And a few hour, two hours later, he came. I was fully in sleep. I was tired, tired, tired. Two days in Marseille to receive people arriving in the morning. Really, I couldn't wake up. And it was Rosh Chodesh. And he was knocking at the door. And uh, I said to myself, David, wake up, no wake up, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, at the end. I said, David, just imagine, it's the king of Morocco who is waiting for you on the yeshiva. Imagine it's Rothschild, it's Mr. Safra, it's the president of America who is waiting for you on the yeshiva. And he wants to see you. You will not go? Of course you will go. Why? Because you want to be next to them. It's a kavod. It's an honor that they came to see you. So it's an it's honor to have a picture with them. Maybe they give you something. Maybe they will not give you nothing. But it's an it's honor to be with them. And Hashem will give you life. It's not an honor to take a picture with Him the synagogue. That thought make me jump from bed and I went to the synagogue. My friend, to have such a feeling, this instinct to feel that you have to have a picture with Hashem in the synagogue, that means that Hashem is already inside you. Because if Hashem was not inside you, 
you will not wake up. You will carry on sleeping. My friend, this is something that we have to remember all the time. Always have Hashem on you. I wish you well. Chaber, I wish you well for you and all your family. And may Hashem give to all those who pass away the mother-in-law of Caesar and the parent of Suki. And uh, forgive me, I have not all the names. May their neshama be in the and the zikhut of Rabbi Mir Pinto be with them. Amen.